This is one of the world's largest crane rigs, carrying a load of over 400 tons. Although the crane is normally well capable of lifting such a load, poor management and supervision of the crane's operation is about to result in a fatal accident. A safety inspector on the ground films as the consequences for reckless behaviour come to fruition. What the hell is it? What's going on here? Okay, watch it, watch it! Miller Park, now known as American Family Field, is a baseball stadium in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, USA. As one of the largest construction projects in Wisconsin history, the stadium features North America's only fan-shaped convertible roof, which can open and close in less than 10 minutes. It was called Miller Park as part of a $40 million naming rights deal with the Miller Brewing Company. This deal expired in 2020, and the stadium has since been known as American and family field. From the time construction began in 1996 though, it was called Miller Park. This period is of particular interest because of the fatalities that occurred during construction, specifically the construction of its uniquely shaped retractable roof. Miller Park was initially slated to open prior to the baseball season in the year 2000. By 1999, contractors were feeling the pressure to get the job finished, as there were payment penalties for missing deadlines. The retractable roof was one of the last large components to be installed, with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries responsible for its construction. To aid in this, the massive Lamson LTL 1500 Transilift Crawler Crane was utilised. At 567 feet, the crane was one of the largest in the world, affectionately nicknamed Big Blue. Big Blue would lift 30 separate sections of the roof to the top of the stadium, each weighing about 450 tons. By July, 9 out of 30 of these sections had been lifted successfully. The 10th lift was to be performed just after 5pm on July 14th, 1999. But this lift would face difficulties the other nine did not. Wind speeds that day were between 20 and 21 miles per hour, with some gusts reaching up to 27 miles per hour. Some workers expressed concern over the crane's operation in these conditions, but management, eager to get the project finished on time, dismissed these concerns. After all, they had been monitoring the wind speeds and their effects on the crane's boom, which was rated for 20 miles per hour. The wind might slightly exceed the crane's rating every now and then, but it didn't seem to pose any threat to the crane. What they neglected to take into consideration, however, was the load the crane was lifting. The crane may have been able to withstand the wind, but they never calculated the effects the wind might have on the crane while it was actually lifting the 9,000 square foot section of roof. Such a large structure essentially acts as a sort of sail, catching the wind and putting great strain on Big Blue, which was already bearing as much wind as it was rated for. The result? The crane collapsed. What the hell is it? What's going on here? Okay, watch it, watch it! Shit! The wreckage of the crane caused massive damage to the project, but worst of all, as it fell, it crashed into another crane. This crane did not carry a hook for construction material, but rather a hoist bucket. Inside, ironworkers Jeffrey Wisher, William DeGrave and Jerome Starr were suspended some 200 feet above the ground. They were observing and directing the lift from the bucket when Big Blue crashed into their crane, sending the three men 200 feet to their deaths. 
The cause of the accident was found to be the crane's operation outside its design specifications, with failure to consider the combination of the load and wind. As a result, three firms were fined a total of $500,000. The widows of Jeffrey Wisher, William DeGrave and Jerome Starr filed a lawsuit against Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, the company responsible for constructing the roof. They were awarded $99,250,000 in damages, with a jury finding Mitsubishi 97% negligent and Lampson, the company that owned the big blue crane, 3% negligent. It remains the single highest verdict in the state of Wisconsin. The incident set the project back about a year as the collapse had caused considerable damage leading to extensive cleanup and repair. Work eventually continued with a new crane, a Van Sumerian D-Mag CC12600. When Miller Park was opened in 2001, a statue of three iron workers was installed to honor the men that lost their lives in its construction. Three iron workers, three husbands, three fathers who spent their last moments witnessing an avoidable accident and bearing the direct brunt of its consequences. What the hell is this? What's going on here? Okay, watch it, watch it! Shit! 